Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody. We're with Dr. Liz Lister, our favorite MD. And uh, we're, again, talking about the COVID-19 virus. Welcome, Dr. Liz. Thank you. Good to see you. Um, Likewise. Nice to see you, gentlemen. You know, we're hearing on TV all the time about uh, the reason why uh, 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 this is so uh, uh, deadly, if you will, is that uh, it really affects people with underlying conditions. And uh, we understand that seniors uh, have underlying conditions, but we're finding out a lot of younger people are also being hospitalized. And uh, they're talking about, because many of them have underlying conditions as well, whether the asthma or something else. But can you maybe straighten us out as to why underlying conditions and what underlying conditions make this particularly dangerous for uh, seniors and other groups? That's such an excellent question, and it's a little bit of a million-dollar question as far as which underlying conditions are worse. However, generally speaking, you know, a lot of us are guilty of not taking care of our health until something breaks or breaks down. Yes, very true. Okay, and an underlying condition really can consist of almost any challenge that a person is experiencing with their health. Now, usually when they talk about this, they're talking about people who are immune compromised, whether they've been treated for cancer or are in treatment for cancer or have existing heart disease uh, or, of course, existing respiratory challenges. Okay, all of these are uh, a little bit more obvious. What I think this means for us at this point in time is we have to raise the bar on ourselves of taking care of ourselves. Uh, we, we all underestimate the importance of sleep, okay? The statistics on, uh, the, of, on Americans and how we don't necessarily get the sleep that we need is uh, now causing a, a real extra problems, okay? With people just really falling ill uh, because our bodies do so much repair work while we are asleep. Right. Uh, get, getting back for a moment to uh, underlying uh, conditions, uh, I was uh, struck by uh, how many younger people were being admitted to hospitals in a serious right. condition. And in the back of my mind, it seems that maybe, even if they didn't have asthma or something like that, a lot of kids have been vaping. And I wonder if that is is uh, something that uh, has been either proven or really suspected in causing uh, uh, kids to be more vulnerable than they other ones might be. You know, I absolutely agree with you. I recently was uh, talking with someone and I was saying that we are going to be reading about this pandemic for decades to come. The data that we don't have now, you know, exactly what increases people's individual risk. Uh, we, we don't have that. I haven't seen that. Uh, one headline that I did see in the last day or two is that, I think you're alluding to this, that the way this pandemic is shaping up in the United States is different. It's a different distribution in terms of ages affected uh, than what was seen in China. So one common theme has been testing. So hopefully we will be ramping up testing. I mean, we are ramping up testing, but hopefully we'll really, really ramp it up uh, to where we can be testing many, many more people in order to really know uh, who has the virus, who doesn't, because everybody's at risk. Even if people don't have the virus, most it's so contagious that uh, they can get it and not get sick and not realize that they've uh, been Dr. Liz, uh, underlying conditions. Uh, what are the kind? What kind of conditions do you think people would underestimate? Um, if you know you've got a, a autoimmune disease, yes. I would think most people would say, "Oh my God, autoimmune! I'm at high risk." But there must be other conditions, like maybe diabetes. Is that 
uh, I can't imagine that's connected to uh, high risk. Is or, it? or high blood pressure. Okay. I'm going to try to put those, just try to describe what's in common among all these di types of illnesses. First of all, diabetes can have an immune component. That's the more recent uh, science related to diabetes, uh, is that there is actually an autoimmune piece to it, not just in younger juvenile diabetics. We, so we have that. Any type of medical condition that anyone listening is dealing with, that means that your cells, your body, your cells, your tissues, your organs, and your body are not necessarily responding as well as possible. So that means that now is the time to, for each person of us to step up our own game uh, about sleep and food and support and uh, doing what we can to deal with the stress that we're all going through. Because stress translates into the cell function. Okay, I'm personally trying to be a little more regular with my supplements. You know, some, even though I do this for a living and I talk about this with people every day, I'm not perfect. And so I don't always take all the vitamins that I want to be taking every single day. So even I'm working on stepping up my game uh, to be more compliant with what I know that I should be doing. So this applies to everybody, no matter what the condition may be. Don't make me tell you to take your supplements again, <laughs> young lady. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, this, this is... There's, there's another interesting feature of this disease. Uh, you know, I'm saying interesting. I mean, it's devastating, really, uh, that it seems to trigger a even further breakdown of immune function. Okay, so this was an article that I read. It was a few days ago now, but it, it seems that some of the re one of the reasons people get so sick with this virus is that it is somehow triggering our own immune system to work against us, especially in the small airways of the lungs where we have very tiny capillary blood vessels and small airways. And that is why people get so sick so quickly when they're needing hospitalization. Uh, I have so, a, I'm okay, sorry. Go ahead, John. I, I was just going to say, it, it's it's really good perspective. Um, what I got from what you just said is that it really doesn't matter what our, quote, underlying issue is. It means that we've got to take better care of ourselves. Exactly. And we've got to recognize that because we have an underlying issue, whatever quote that might be, uh, we are at a little bit higher risk. And I would think everybody can evaluate, you know, how bad their underlying issue is. If I'm, you know, yeah. going yeah. to the hospital for uh, breathing, I'm in big trouble. If I'm just taking an inhalator for my asthma, maybe it's not so bad. But we all have to make that assessment on our own. Yes, that's exactly right. And that's why I encourage everyone to focus on what you can control. You can control your own compliance with medicines that you should be taking, vitamins and supplements that you should be taking, getting the sleep that you need, managing your food. All of these are important. And of course, managing your mindset. That's a, that's a challenge that we all have to rise to at this point. Yes, of course. Physical uh, distancing, but social connecting. We can connect with each other socially a lot, just not in person for right now. We can even do it on the web via Skype. Right. And we're going to save that for another segment. But um, uh, our viewers and listeners are fortunate in that they have the expertise of Dr. Liz, MD. But if the general public wanted to get further information, there's so much misinformation uh, and hoaxes that are being perpetrated uh, on the uh, internet uh, and so on and so forth. Other than uh, coronavirus dot, or is it COVID-19 dot CDC, uh, is that a good source? And are there any other decent sources? Yes, the CDC is an excellent source of information. The Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security is another one of my favorites. Okay. They're looking particularly at the U.S., patterns in the U.S., what's different here than what we're seeing in other countries. 
I occasionally look at the numbers around the world, but I, again, we've got to manage our mindset during this difficult time. And uh, usually that's pretty anxiety provoking to see uh, big numbers in other parts of the world. So I try to focus on uh, supporting my local economy, uh, keeping my family safe and healthy, and, uh, and focusing on what we can control. Well, great Good advice. Yeah, uh, and, and my last bit of my medical advice to everybody is turn off all the news channels and turn on <laughs> Tom and Jerry, a cartoon network. <laughs> Okay, yeah. where it's just good old bashing each other and having fun, and then everybody's great at the end of it. Yeah, good well, idea. In any event, thank you again, uh, Dr. Liz, and uh, we hope to have you back again soon and uh, sharing your, your knowledge and your insights for us. Very valuable in this uh, very crucial time in our uh, history. Thank you. Yes, welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.